Well, yeah. And then you can also start to look at it as uh, sometimes when, why we actually have people eat more calories to lose weight, right? Cause you're going to increase muscle mass, which means your basal metabolic rate is going to go up, which increases your calorie burned. So mm-hmm. it's not always just a simple thing of starve yourself and lose weight, right? Because you're, you're playing with some survival mechanisms there too. We are live. Oh, Tom's got his glasses down (laughs) and making him look really smart today. Love it. We, uh, Tom doesn't actually need his headphones on, but he's doing it to support us. I could put my glasses on too, because I don't actually need glasses, but I could wear them to support Tom. <laughs> yeah. This is a hundred percent emotional, yeah. mental. It's mental. Do you, are they plugged in at all, Tom? No, I actually have them plugged in now. I don't need them, but yeah, I decided to plug them in because. Well, thank you. I don't know. If I'm going to wear them, might as well. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. So good. Always good to start off with a laugh. Here's another laugh. As I sit up for those that can see me, which place looks very short now. <laughs> Today, we're talking about muscle gain and uh, the importance of it, importance of having muscle and how to gain it. Now, yeah. <laughs> These are my muscles. Okay. okay. Sorry. On track. On track. Yeah. We're ready go. to go. Ready to go. So we talked about protein last time, I believe, and the time before, right? I think well, we talked about it's weight loss. Yeah. And the importance of getting protein for yep. weight loss. So protein is, well, Tom, you talk about protein a bit in muscle game. It's kind of like everyone always talks about it as like the building block, which really it is. It's what I mean, helps to build your muscles back up after they've been kind of broken down or a big part of that. And it's a, obviously we've talked about it in the diet as well. That is a, one of the main three macronutrients. So getting a good balance of protein in your diet is super important, whether you um, get it from meat or other sources, it's regardless of where you get it from. It's important to make sure that you do get enough protein in because we talked about it for weight loss and that's importance last day. But today specifically, we're going to be talking about for increasing muscle mass and not everybody wants to get super, super strong or get super, super big. And it, so it doesn't matter though, in my opinion, if you need to get, you don't want to get super big or not, you need to eat some protein. You just might eat it in differing amounts, right? Yeah. Um, so everyone needs an adequate amount of protein in order to not only sustain your current level of muscle, but I'm obviously to increase it as well. And so there's lots of, I mean, different benefits, of course, and different types of protein sources that you can get. And there's different things in protein that are super important that we can only get through eating them. So there are, you've talked about amino acids maybe before on here, and there are, there are 20 total amino acids, nine of which are essential, which means you can only get them through your diet. Mm -hmm. So your body does not produce them on its own. So if we're not eating enough protein or a variety of different protein sources, you may be missing out on some of these amino acids because you're not getting them through your diet and stuff like that. So a lot of people always ask like, yeah, is, is this protein good? Or is that type of protein good? It's like, we always say, try to get a variety if you can, because you're going to get a lot of maybe some different amino acids with in different levels, in different types of protein and stuff like that. So, um, I know I always talk about, you know, even with vegetables too, like cook them in a variety of different ways. Same thing with your proteins, get a variety of different proteins if you can, and try to cook them in a variety of different ways as well. Cause it might bring out and don't worry about the yeah nitty nitpicky stuff about it too, too much. But if you have a decent variety of foods and cooking methods, you're probably going to be doing pretty okay. Pretty okay. Yeah. I think it's, um, people will always ask too, well, what about protein powder? Can I just get all my protein from protein drinks? And I think our general consensus is food first, supplement second. So if you can't get your protein from food for whatever reason, whether that's like 
because of prepping or because of availability or for whatever reason, then yeah, it is super helpful to get more protein from a supplement or from a powder, but it's still, we believe protein from food first, supplement second. Yeah. And even talking about supplementation, it's really good to know if you actually need supplementation too, Mm -hmm. or else you'll be guessing. And that's what we brought on into our gym. Our members get a discount for blood testing to see where they may be deficient in different supplementation. Uh, So that's really beneficial too. Mm -hmm. Uh, The next one talking about why it's important is when you have, or when you break down muscle. So when you're working out and you're stressing your muscle, right? There's going to be a breakdown of the tissue. Now, in order for the muscle to gain size or gain strength, there has to be a breakdown. Like there's a bunch of different processes that happen. There's mechanical, there's chemical, and there's a few more. I can't like physiological. E- yeah, that's the right word, isn't yeah. it? There's Maybe a bunch that's of not things. What you're thinking of. Yeah, there. Yeah, so there's a different series of things that happen um, in order to increase muscle size and. What does happen though, when you break down the muscle in order to, for it to heal, you're going to have to spend energy on that. So that's actually going to increase calorie burn for you. So if you think of it and not saying one is better than the other, you need both. But if you think of it compared to a heavy cardiovascular workout, you're going to probably burn a lot more calories in the workout itself, in the endurance or cardio workout but you're going to burn more calories afterwards in a strength workout where you're gaining muscle size because you have to recover and adapt from the stress put in your body and your, your body's going to send energy, it's going to send calories in order to do that. So that's a happy bonus about building muscle is you burn more calories. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it's important to have a variety of movements in your workout program. So you just do one or the other, then you're losing out on a lot of benefits. Yeah. Yeah, heavy lifting is super beneficial if muscle gain is your primary goal. Yeah, heavy lifting or just, and lifting when we think, general. yeah, lifting in general, because that also helps you be more functional, right? Mm-hmm. The goal is to be a functional human being, not just people specialize at the sacrifice of other things in their life. So if I want to become a world champion deadlifter, I might not be a really fast marathon runner. And that would happen. We know that. But if I want to be a really fast marathon runner, I might not be able to be functional in other movements of life. Like I might not be able to deadlift my body weight or do these other things. So you're going to sacrifice if you try to go the extreme of one end. And Mm -hmm. I guess you can talk about this one, Julissa, is increased metabolic rate. rate. Yeah. Um, I like to look at this from, well... So we have that fancy scanner at the gym and it tells us everybody's what's called the basal metabolic rate. So we've talked about this a few times before, but basically that's the number of calories that your body burns in a 24 hour period at rest. So um, if you're to just lay in bed for 24 hours and do nothing, your body would still need a certain amount of calories just to function. So pumping your heart, breathing, digesting, all that good stuff. Um, So for example, I think mine's like 1,540 or something like that. So my body needs 1,540 calories just to survive. Um, And for a person of my height and stature, that's actually a fair bit because I naturally hold a lot of muscle. So if it was like, say me versus um, someone the same height as me that maybe is thinner, doesn't have as much muscle, they would have a lower base amount basal metabolic rate or someone with more muscle would have higher. So essentially having more muscle on your body just means that your body basically burns calories for you at a higher rate without you doing any extra work. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is a nice benefit of sometimes it will just be referred to as like your metabolism. Um, and so that is one really great thing about building muscle is essentially it means you're boosting your metabolism without having to do extra work when you're not actually in the gym working out or lifting weights. So it's like my body's doing its own workout for me while I'm sleeping. (laughs) Yep. And I think for reference point, I think I burned 2,400 just by living. You're just like showing off. I know. Cause you're a huge human being. Yeah. But it kind of gives you, I mean, obviously I would be 
have more muscle mass than Jalisa mm-hmm. and I'm going to, and I'm just larger in general. <laughs> so I give her more energy. Yeah. I think it's cool to know about that too, because oftentimes like, let's say, um, people have this idea that in order to lose weight, you can only eat like 1100 calories or 1200 calories or something like that. But to know that your body's baseline being like 15 or 16 or 1700 calories just to survive, it's such good evidence to show like, no, no, you need uh, more calories than that because you're also walking and moving and just doing activities of daily living throughout the day. So your body is probably burning closer to 2000 calories in a day without you even working out. So, I mean, it's obviously dependent on a person, but, um, rarely have I seen anyone's, um, basal metabolic rate to be even under 1100. So it's, yeah, it's very cool to see how that number changes too, as people gain muscle. Well, yeah. And then you can also start to look at it as that sometimes when, why we actually have people eat more calories to lose weight right? Because you're going to increase muscle mass, which means your basal metabolic rate is going to go up, which increases your calorie burned. So Mm -hmm. it's not always just a simple thing of starve yourself and (laughs) lose weight, right? Because you're, you're playing with some survival mechanisms there too. Tom, do you have anything to add on that? No, I was just going to add that exact point in by saying like, I've had that happen on multiple occasions where we add in more protein, so they eat, they're eating, they haven't changed anything else. They've just added a little more protein, eating more calories, and then the pounds start to come off plus gaining strength too. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. And then I think I just had a conversation with that member this morning too. Um, that like, as you, if you do, there's a lot of different things going on, like we've talked about, but if you do start to build muscle, it's really hard to build a lot of muscle without gaining some fat right right? it's also really hard to lose a lot of weight without losing some muscle so if you're going like so i think a lot of people want to try to lose or gain just one specific um, aspect of your body like gain muscle or lose fat but you're gonna have a little bit of the other come along with it as well Mm -hmm. and so i think just having that in perspective too it was really good but had a good chat this morning and just realizing that no, like you're, you're trending in the right direction. Your, your weights that you're lifting are going up in the gym, even though you maybe have a little bit less muscle, you've also come down in weight since you started like, what's he at now? 40, 40 ish pounds. So yeah. 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 Cool. I think that's when it's important to look at like the big long snapshot of people's journey of like, say six months to a year versus like week to week or month to month. Cause yeah, it takes a while for all that to balance out. And in the end, well, not that there is an end to the journey, but generally we see once your body kind of figures out like, oh, this is what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Then it's usually like, oh yeah, I'm gaining strength and losing fat and your body is smart and it will, it all evens out in the end. <laughs> yeah. It's fun to experiment. And I've experimented on myself quite a bit. Like I've been anywhere from 220 pounds of 5% body fat to 12% body fat at 215 pounds, right? And it's, it's fun to see how changing your diet and changing how you work out can really affect that. And sometimes I might feel better at a higher percentage of fat, right? I feel stronger. I feel more functional. Mm -hmm. I have more energy too. So it's not always about getting these exact markers. Um, Each person's going to be individually different. Another benefit is Resiliency, I kind of touched on that a bit. Um, it just helps you be more bulletproof. It, it, if you fall, you have more muscle mass, mm-hmm. you're less likely to have an injury that's going to take you out for a long time. Or if you have a significant injury, you've built a buffer, right? So if we have this buffer, this spectrum to say, this is fitness way over here, like elite fitness, this is sickness. If you're closer to elite fitness or your potential fitness and then you get injured, you're going to move a little closer to sickness, right? But that's better than if you were at closer to sickness and you get injured, you're going to move towards sickness and it's going to be really hard to get closer to that potential. So it's always mm-hmm. good to be a little more bulletproof in that way. Yep. Yeah. I can just, there's a, oh, yeah, you, go. <laughs> you, me, you, you, me, me, you, me, you, 
you. Yeah. No, right no, I have a uh, older, older client who would like needed to gain some weight. Um, and I was like, if, yeah, I don't want this to ever happen to you, but if you did get sick, like, you know, there's not a ton of room for you to lose. Right. So yeah, gaining that, I mean, if you do end up like getting some sort of sickness, like weight can come off pretty quick and you don't necessarily, it's not necessarily a healthy thing all the time to have that drastic weight loss. So we mm -hmm. just up again, upped his, up his protein intake and there you go. Boom. It's the answer. Here. It can work for both losing and gaining. That's why it's that personal approach is always, always best to kind of talk through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to say something too. Oh yeah. I was just going to say like, so when I was at the hospital nursing, I like, you know, right away the patients. So I worked on a surgical floor, you know, right away, the patients that are going to do well postoperatively are going to be the ones who had good strength prior to, because let's say someone falls and breaks a bone and they didn't have good muscle strength to start with trying to get them to a place that they're functional and able to walk on their own again is so much more difficult than say someone who is like, yeah, had been active and physically fit to start with. So it is definitely one of those things where you kind of do it in a preventative mindset as well. Of like, I'm going to set myself up as best I can in case something ever happens. Yeah. Not that you want it to, but I mean, accidents happen. People fall off ladders or car accidents or whatever. Not that yeah. you ever want that to happen, but you never know. And then, yeah, you're, you're always going to be better off if you have a good baseline. Yeah. It, we talk about increasing strength so you can be more functional than now, but we also don't know what tomorrow's going to hold, mm -hmm. right? We could fall. We could, there could be something, there could be a virus. There could be something that stresses our immune system or our physical strength and mental, mental um, fitness as well. And it, it pays to build up that bank account where you kind of think of if you're investing in these things, you're building up a hedge, you're building up, um, a currency against the unknowns of tomorrow. So that when it, if it happens, you're not caught left empty handed or worse in debt, right? It's really hard to pay into these things that are unknown if you're in debt. Mm -hmm. Um, HGH, increase, which is a good thing. Human growth horm hormone. Mm -hmm. Tom, do you want to talk a bit about that or? No, well, you, you've got probably dove more into it with your sauna and cold exposure. Yeah. It, stuff like that, but yeah, it's a hormone, right? And it, it, yeah. it there's, it's associated with like it, there's an increase in this hormone, the more muscle you have simply put, I guess. Yeah. Um, so now let's talk about you know, I think problems. I was going to say everyone has it. Yes. Like, um, a lot of people want to, I don't know, they hear human growth hormone and they think like it's some sort of steroids, perf yeah, steroids or performance enhancing drug or something, but it's like, no, it's natural. And there are ways to increase it naturally. naturally. And you don't need to, I mean, there are some tech techniques that I know, Matt, you've been researching more, like I said, but, um, you don't need to try to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. No, like in testosterone is really important, uh, mm -hmm. even for ladies, right? Like it's, yep. it's important to have because yep. the lack of testosterone can also lead to things like depression, fatigue, poor sleep, um, muscle pain, joint pain, all these different things. So it's very, very important to have mm -hmm. and lifting heavy and muscle gain can help you have more of that. And like chopping down trees and getting out. It's true though. Yeah. They, they've shown out that if you get out, out in nature, it can increase your testosterone. I know too. I was kind of being funny, but I also know that it's true. Like yeah. being one with nature is actually really important for testosterone and health in general. Pretty yeah. cool stuff. We should do a podcast on that the importance of getting outside and connecting to nature again, mm -hmm. um, being around that. So now let's talk about how, how do you, increase muscle. And there's lots of different approaches. We'll just give you a couple here. The first one would be, so if you break your muscles down, you have to recover. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different recovery methods. Tom mentioned one, which is more, it's a harder one to have access to, but a good muscle increase, a good way to increase muscle is sauna. 
heat exposure, right? Because you increase um, heat shock proteins and increased uh, human growth hormone and all these different things. And there's been studies to say, if you have access to a sauna directly after you do uh, strength, strength or resistance, a weighted resistance workout, you can increase your muscle um, pretty significantly compared to someone who would not get in the sauna. Mm -hmm. Uh, other recovery tips team uh sleep yeah number one sleep and then more sleep mm -hmm. um and then some more sleep probably no i'm just kidding but yeah sleep is number one i think uh all your recovery happens when you're sleeping pretty much so um we say what is our general rule less than five hours of sleep don't even bother going to the gym because it's probably not going to be beneficial because your body needs sleep before it can perform or achieve things. So sleep comes first. Um, and that's when our muscles are repaired. That's when our hormones do the things that they need to do. Um, yeah, that's, that's when the magic happens. So yeah. aim, like the whole eight hours of sleep thing is not a myth. It's really important for muscle gain and strength. Um, and then obviously protein, we talked about that water is huge. Um, and then things like as simple as stretching and ROMWAD and maintaining your mobility is also really important in muscle recovery and muscle health and being able to build healthy muscle. If you have no range of motion, it's really hard to, um, lift heavy or lift properly. If let's say you can't get into a squat position or you can't, um, hinge far enough to grab a barbell or a dumbbell or something like that to do deadlifts, or you can't raise your arm over your head. It's hard to build shoulder strength. It's not impossible, but stretching for mobility and range of motion is important too, to be able to recover and build strength. Water creatine is a good one. Mm -hmm. I want to add something on the sleep thing. If like Julie said, mentioned, I think she was just over exaggerating a little bit, but if you don't sleep, more than five hours a night, it doesn't mean you can't ever go to the gym. <laughs> but if you're not sleeping yes. more than four hours, three hours a night, that's probably even the lowest hanging fruit yeah. for you to tackle, get more sleep, mm -hmm. increase. Yeah. Um, I never exaggerate. Never. No. We always speak in absolutes. Yes. I was going to touch on um, your kind of the, the meal, the recovery meal. A lot of people are like, what's the best recovery meal? Mm -hmm. And when should I have it? Is that 20 minute window? If I don't have, get my protein within 20 minutes of my workout, is my workout wasted? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there maybe are some studies out there showing that it is beneficial to get it sooner after your workout. Um, but what we've always said is like, if you can have a well balanced meal within, I don't know, an hour to an hour and a half, maybe even two hours of your workout, like, and with some water, that is probably the best recovery thing nutrition wise you could do if you have some protein for guys if it's two palms ladies one palm of protein is usually kind of where we start people off with and then should get say your, one palm size don't eat your palm well sorry <laughs> don't eat your palm one palm size yeah i guess thick, for those that can't see the video yeah. <laughs> thickness of a deck of cards yeah. size of your palm um that kind of protein and then i think in not getting enough carbs too is important because that's what fuels yeah. your muscles, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you talk about the plate method a lot, Lisa, yeah. half veggies, a quarter protein, a quarter carbs, and then some of those healthy fats too help bring mm -hmm. down a little bit of inflammation if needed. Yeah, I um, I second that with like people often said like, oh, well, everyone in the gym like must have a protein shake after a workout. And uh, I say like, if you know you're not going to get in a meal within two hours of your workout, then yeah, probably have a protein shake because that's probably beneficial. But if you can get in, like we said, food first, if you know you're going to go home and have supper, you don't necessarily need that extra protein right away. It's not as like, I don't think that is like the, as huge of a thing as it's often made to be, um, to an extent. Yeah, there's a bunch of things about that on anabolic window and things mm -hmm. they say within an hour. But again, if that would be more so if you're really trying to get as much as possible mm -hmm. and you have all the building blocks to a good diet and stuff. But if yeah. you don't, then don't worry about that type of thing. Actually, I said, just get a whole meal in as quickly as you can after you work out. Mm -hmm. 
focus um, on the basics. Basics yeah. first. Basics first. Yep. Um, and there actually needs to be some sort of inflammation. So I know for those that follow me on social media, you know, I do ice baths, try to avoid doing ice baths within six hours prior or after to heavy lifting, because it can mitigate a lot of the inflammation that is important for that recovery piece we mentioned at the start. So that's another big thing. Um, outside of that window, the six hour window, it can actually be good to help you gain muscle too. So it can be kind of confusing that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and then supplementation, another good one, like we creatine, that's a pretty solid one. Well studied, well backed, mm -hmm. um, and magnesium. fish oil, oh, yeah. magnesium too. Yep. Yeah. And then the application in the gym setting, uh, how you gain muscle. There's a lot of different rep ranges, a lot of different methods you can use. Usually rule of thumb. And I'm, I hesitate to say this because then people get caught in these rep ranges, like one to three reps is more central nervous system stress, right? So you're going to stress your central nervous system. There won't be as much muscle, um, hypertrophy or muscle growth from that. And then I believe it's like five to five, six to 12. That's where you're going to really get five to six to seven. It's funny, right? Cause then we always kind of stick in that one to three, three to five, and then eight to 12, but you can do seven. You can do six reps. It doesn't. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing in the gym that I think is one of the best ways to gain muscle is also slow eccentrics. So going um, slow on the way down in your movements, which super easy, it's super easy. No, it's not, it's really challenging, but it's also a great way to train. If you train from home and you don't have really heavy weights, um, that's one of the best ways to utilize light weights and still gain muscle size and strength is see how slow you can go. So slow eccentrics is just, yeah, going slow on the eccentric portion of whatever movement you're doing. So yep. Tom, that could be two seconds. It could be eight seconds. Just depends on what you're doing. Tom, while I say this next one, can you find the, like the, the four ways of building muscle, mechanical, chemical? You didn't you like know, my words? No, I did. I no, think it wasn't three, right. I think what you said embodied all the. Yeah. So I realized right. that after I was summarizing it for you. Yeah, that's good. Um, the other one that not a lot of people do or know of is BFR, blood flow mm. restriction training. Now, again, we're talking about the anabolic window for getting protein in. This would be similar to that for exercise. So blood flow restriction training is basically where you put a tourniquet, right? Around your like muscle. Needs to come with a disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. So don't like research this and try it with someone who knows, but basically you restrict blood flow in a joint or in a muscle area. And then you do the protocols about 30 reps, really lightweight. Then you do 15 reps, 15 reps, 15 reps. And there's been some really cool studies on this in increasing uh, muscle size and actually strength at lighter mm -hmm. weights comparatively. Like they're saying that you can get similar benefits to 80% of your one rep max with way less weight in this uh, modality of training, it does not feel great. No, it is really uncomfortable. Yeah, doesn't it also help with endurance somehow? Yep, helps with endurance. It is really good for. I know some um, rehab prehab is used on that, yeah. right? Because you can't load. Let's say you want to get muscle strength and muscle gain without putting weight on a muscle. This is a really good way to do that. I feel like I read a study of like basketball players or something and. I don't know, their strength and endurance improved from that. Yeah, they did a VO2 test. So just by someone walking with the uh, yes, around their legs, just walking their VO2 improved quite a bit compared to the group that did not have that. Did okay. you find it, Tom? Um, no. Oh, no. We'll figure it out and post it below. I don't know what the... Yeah, we'll put it, put it oh. in the comments below. I know, yeah, um, chemical, mechanical. And then, oh, I thought you had it there. No. Okay. Um, well, these three were like mechanical tension, muscle damage, and metabolic stress. Okay. Somewhat the same. Tom, do you have anything in terms of training 
to gain muscle? Any good uh, ideas? Um, I think like it's it's a little bit person dependent. Like we talked about, I mean, a bunch of different rep ranges and maybe the amount of days that you need to be in the gym each week. Um, if you're relatively new, I would say two days a week, you can probably see some decent strength gains and potentially a little bit of muscle gain. Um, what I found for myself is I need a third day. So if I'm going to work on gaining, a, if I want to work on gaining muscle for a while, I need to add in kind of three days of strength training and anywhere from, I don't know, probably four to six movements, not too much more than that though. And in good balance of, you know, squatting, hinging, pushing, pulling, mm -hmm. um, some people, they can do five days a week of strength training. I know I did a strength training program for a while where it was five days a week. Um, and then by the end of it, I felt like I was too big and too slow. I didn't like the way that I felt like I couldn't do as many fast movements as well as I wanted to for, for CrossFit specifically. And I just felt, yeah, it didn't feel as good. So, and it's very individual, but I think it's important to make sure that you do have a lot of compound movements in there. Um, yep. Make sure that you are doing your major lifts, your deadlifts, your squats, um, your your pulls, so pull ups, rows, um, pressing, and overhead pressing, trying to push and pull in a bunch of different planes, and then single leg work. Actually, I mean, I'm going. There's a lot of things here, but single leg work, yeah, has been shown to be. You can almost gain like lift more. If you took like, here's a, the example, I guess, if you took something you could do with like a back rack reverse lunge or something, um, I know one guy out of the States did a study on this and he was showing that he's got athletes that can do a back rack split squat as heavy as their back squat. So you can load up, potentially load up one side more percentage wise um, with single leg work as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's impressive. Love it. Katie. Cool. It's enough to get you all strong. Let's go gain some muscle. Let's go do it. Anything to add? We're all good. Oh, I was going to say that was a lot of, yeah. that's a lot of info for a lot of info. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have we just Thursday fire hoses at you. Yeah. <laughs> See you. <everyone. laughs>